Ankle pain, complete overview. Anatomy and injury of the anterior ankle. Anatomy of the anterior compartment includes the tibia and the fibula. It also includes the tibialis anterior tendon, the extensor hallucis longus tendon, and the extensor digitorum longus tendon. Here you can see the anterior tibial artery and the deep perineal nerve. You can also see the superior and inferior extensor retinaculum. There are many structures present at the anterior aspect of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Common injuries and conditions around the anterior ankle. The first condition, the anterolateral impingement. Painful limitation of full range of motion of the ankle due to soft tissue or osseous bony pathology. Soft tissue thickening commonly seen in athletes with prior trauma that extends into the ankle joint. This type of impingement may also be bony. Tibial bone spur impingement on the talus can become a source of chronic ankle pain and limitation of ankle motion in athletes. An osseous or a bony spur on the anterior lip of the tibia contacting the talus during dorsiflexion. The second condition is arthritis of the ankle joint. Commonly, the result of a prior injury or inflammation to the ankle joint can usually be diagnosed with an examination and x-ray. The third condition is osteochondritis desiccans of the talus, a chip-type fracture that usually occurs with severe ankle sprains, causes pain, swelling, and the stiffness of the ankle joint. X-rays, CT scan, or MRI are commonly used for the diagnosis. The fourth condition is tibialis anterior tendinitis. Tibialis anterior tendinitis is an overuse condition commonly seen in runners. Common injury that usually accompanies anterior chin splints. If the tendon is strained, pain and tenderness will be felt upon active dorsiflexion or when the tendon is touched. Anatomy of the medial ankle includes the tibia, the tibialis posterior tendon, the flexor digitorum longus tendon, and the flexor hallucis longus tendon. Here you can see the posterior tibial artery and nerve and its calcaneal branches, as well as the flexor retinaculum, the Achilles tendon, and the bursa. There are many structures present at the medial aspect of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Common injuries and conditions around the medial ankle the first condition is posterior tibial tendinitis or rupture. Posterior tibial tendon problems can occur from overuse activities, degeneration, or trauma. The posterior tibial tendon is one of the major supporting structures of the foot. The tendon helps to keep the arch of the foot in its normal position. When there is insufficiency or rupture of the tendon, the arch begins to sag and a flat foot deformity can occur with associated tight Achilles tendon. The posterior tibial tendon rupture occurs in a hypovascular zone which occurs usually distal to the medial malleolus. Clinical presentation, painful swelling on the posterior medial aspect of the ankle. Unable to perform a single leg toe raise, too many toes, flat foot, fixed deformity of the hind foot. 
There are four stages of posterior tibial tendon rupture. Rupture of the posterior tibial tendon could be missed. The second condition is tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a compression of the tibial nerve in the tarsal tunnel. The flexor tenaculum covers the nerve. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is similar to compression of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel. Causes include ganglia, accessory muscle, or soft tissue mass. Differential diagnosis may include herniated disc, stress fracture of the calcaneus, or plantar fasciitis. Clinical findings include pain on the medial side of the foot, pain worse with dorsiflexion due to tension on the nerve. Parathesia and numbness of the foot, positive tenel sign behind the medial malleolus. The third condition is flexor hallucis tendinitis, which is pain, is swelling, and weakness posterior to the medial malleolus. Dorsiflexion of the big toe may be reduced when the ankle is placed in dorsiflexion. Triggering and pain along the tendon sheath may also occur with toe flexion. This often occurs in activities such as ballet dancing in which plantar flexion is necessary. The final condition is rupture of the deltoid ligament. The deltoid ligament is the primary stabilizer of the ankle joint. The deltoid ligament provides support to prevent the ankle from everting. An isolated eversion sprain with tear of the deltoid ligament is a rare injury. Anatomy and injury of the posterior ankle. Here you can see the tibia, the fibula, the talus, and the calcaneus. You can also see the Achilles tendon the shorter nerve, and the small saphenous vein, the tibial nerve, and the posterior tibial artery and vein. You can also see the flexor hallucis longus tendon and the retrocalcaneal bursa. As you can see here, there are many structures present at the posterior aspect of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Common injuries and conditions around the posterior ankle. The first condition is posterior ankle impingement or the os trigonum. The os trigonum is a larger process of the talus, a non-united piece of accessory bone seen on the posterior aspect of the talus. This condition is common among athletes such as ballet dancers. Tenderness in the posterolateral aspect of the ankle posterior to the perineal tendon, especially with passive plantar flexion. It may also be seen in association with flexor hallucis longus tenosynovitis. The second condition is the flexor hallucis longus tenosynovitis and we described this condition before. It is the condition which is associated with ballet dancing in which extreme plantar flexion is necessary and the patient will have a swelling and pain posterior to the medial malleolus. There will be also triggering with toe flexion and dorsiflexion of the big toe is less when the ankle is dorsiflexed. The third condition is Achilles tendinitis. Irritation and inflammation occurs due to overuse. There is pain and swelling and tears within the tendon. It's usually treated with therapy and rarely with injection. Do not inject inside the tendon. It's rarely treated with surgery. The last condition is Achilles tendon rupture. Achilles tendon can become prone to rupture with age, lack of use, or by aggressive exercises. Achilles tendon rupture is diagnosed by the Thompson test and by an MRI. 
treatment may be conservative without surgery by using a cast or a boot, but the rupture rate may be high if the patient is treated conservatively. Surgery is done by approximation of the torn ends. The risk of surgery is infection, a skin and wound complication. Anatomy and injury of the lateral ankle, lateral foot and ankle ligaments. Ligaments of the ankle include the syndesmosis ligaments, the anterior tibiofibular ligament, and the posterior tibiofibular ligament. Ligaments around the ankle include the anterior telofibular ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament, and the posterior telofibular ligament. Here you can see the perineal tendons that run behind the fibula. You can see the perineus bravus tendon and the perineus longus tendon and the Achilles tendon. You can also see the bursa of the Achilles tendon. You can also see the superior and inferior perineal retinaculum. There are two bands that support the tendons of the perineus longus and the perineus bravus. And you can see the shorter nerve passes along the lateral ankle. You can see the proximity of the lateral ankle ligaments to the perineal tendons. So you can see there are many structures present on the lateral side of the ankle. These structures are often susceptible to injury. Diagnosis of these injuries can be confusing and many of these injuries can be missed. A diagnosis of a sprained ankle may be the wrong diagnosis. So what are the common injuries and conditions around the lateral ankle? Number one, an ankle is sprain. The second type is a high ankle sprain or a syndesmotic injury, which may require surgery. The third type is perineal tendon subluxation. Usually, the superior retinaculum is injured. The fourth type is rupture of the perineus longus tendon. Here you can see the os perineum is displaced proximally. The fifth type is perineal tendinitis. The sixth type is fracture to the anterior process of the calcaneus. The seventh type is fracture of the lateral process of the talus. And the last type is Achilles tendonitis. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.